Good afternoon and good evening and welcome back to Journey Photography. So in this video we're going to look at the new AI features in a little bit more detail but focusing on how they really fit into our workflow and how we can use them very successfully to improve our images. Uh, as we always see the images tend to have a few things in the shots that we don't like uh, this bicycle for example here and I could have moved it but it's easier now nowadays to use the AI tools to remove things like that and the cars up on the road and some fencing we can look at that and also I'm going to use the Lightroom denoise function the AI denoise function which is exceptionally good now part of my workflow all the time so um, work on this image to improve those little details and then I'm going to do one of my classic day to nights and we're going to uh, we're going to turn this into uh, into a, a nighttime shot as well just to finish off so um, I hope you enjoy the video if you do please click like um, if you haven't already subscribed I'd love you to subscribe and join me on my adventure here on YouTube I've also placed the raw for this the raw image for this down in the comments link for it below so feel free to download that and uh, follow along all I ask is if that you do share the, the image um, on social media once you've completed it all I ask is you give credit to Jamie Mathlin and uh, direct people my way so the very first thing that I now do uh, one of the new AI functions that you find in Lightroom is the denoise function uh, which is in the details section uh, on the right hand side a uh, very straightforward function to use um, click on denoise it will load it uh, into the module for you and then it will give you uh, a sort of sample of the enhanced versus the non-enhanced um, so you can see there's a little bit of noise in the sky if I show there and if I let go to the load it, it, it removes it completely it is in fact a very very good feature so um, even with a 61 megapixel camera here um, you still find that the noise level even shot at 200 ISO can still be there so denoise is a really good function so we're just going to select 50% no more or less that's all we really need um, we're going to stack create a stack which means the original image will just go behind uh, the new image so I'm going to click enhance and you'll see up in the top left corner it will be working on creating the DNG from the raw file um, which will will then be with this new denoise function applied now looking at all the different types of noise reduction that there are available and there are some very good ones um, Topaz particularly is very good um, this is this is up there with it the, the, the basic denoise module that you get with Lightroom is ex exceptionally good uh, if I just zoom in there you will see how sharp this is and uh, no no noise even if I go in closer still we go to 300% um, little to no noise after it's been processed so really really exceptional so that's the first thing I always do now is apply that and and what you find is is you can actually work now with higher ISOs um, and still have really quite uh, quite good images once you've run the denoise function so I actually happy to run now uh, up to 1600 ISO sometimes even 3200 ISO um, to still get you know really good really good images so um, yeah excellent excellent function now the next thing I, I normally do is I sort out my perspective uh, can we can we adjust the perspective to make the image really workable so to do that you go down to transform on the right hand side and you can click auto uh, if I just click auto it, it, it works sometimes it works well sometimes it doesn't in this case it's actually done quite a good job the column has been straight straightened the building the chimney there is relatively straight so I'm, I'm actually happy to go with auto otherwise I would use guided and, and pull down the lines but for now I'm just going to go with auto on this image um, so then I'm going to just go to the crop tool and I'm just going to look at the crop is there something I can do here to improve uh, the crop of this image um, I've, I've got the padlock unlocked at the moment and I'm going to go in and I'm just going to have a look to see whether 4.3 works slightly better so that we've got a little bit of a cut off on this so I could even bring that over a little bit here I don't want that chimney in the top there so I think I'm going to go with 4.3 I do like that that crop I'm going to hit return and that's going to accept it for us 
So that's uh, that's the crop done, that's perspective done, and that's all the noise done. So the next thing we really need to do is to go over into uh, Photoshop to use the other AI functions, particularly the remove tool, and specifically the AI, the, the AI tool, which is the generative fill, um, so that we can tidy up some of these vehicles and this fence work up here and this big sign. We can remove that from the scene and, of course, the bicycle. But before I do go over into, like, uh, into Photoshop, uh, I do like to just boost the shadows here a little bit. So I'm going to go up to about 70, just so that I can clearly see what's going on in here. And I'm just going to bring down the shadows uh, by about 40, minus 40. Um, and that just gives us something to work with. Now, sometimes when you apply um, too much shadows and reduction of too much highlights, you can get uh, quite a, uh, a high level of clarity brought into the scene. So sometimes it's good to just back the clarity off here. And I'm just coming off minus 5 on the clarity just to soften the image so it's not, uh, it's not too, too much in the way of clarity. So now I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to edit in. I'm going to go into the Adobe Photoshop beta, which is the one I'm using at the moment because that has the generative fill function at this time. So I'm going to click on that. I'm then going to jump over to uh, Photoshop. Here we go. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to sort out the removal of some of these uh, bits and pieces. The bicycle, I think, is first to be removed. So we're just going to zoom in. We're going to hold down the Alt or Option key on Windows. We're just going to zoom in a little bit like that. Um, we're then going to take the lasso tool, which is L, and uh, we're just going to draw around this bicycle and uh, make sure that you've got a little bit of the, the scenery uh, included. Uh, don't go really tight around the object. Uh, I'm a little bit tight there, but it should be okay. Um, so that Generative Fill has got something to, to work with here. So once you've got your lasso, your selection done, I'm going to click Generative Fill. And then I'm not going to write anything in the text box. I'm literally just going to click Generate. And it's going to send the informa information away to Adobe servers. It's going to process that information on their servers. And then it's going to send the information back uh, and fill in, give us some alternatives. Uh, for what, what it thinks we can do to remove this bicycle. And I have to say, in all the time I've been using this over the last few weeks, it does still surprise me how how excellent the function really is and what it can do. And there you go, it's it's removed that. That's option one. I'm just going to hold the space bar down, move that back to the centre. That's option two. It's also very good, I like that one. And option three. That's fine. The grass is a bit high. You know, I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with option two. So we've got lower grass here, but more grass over there. Now, what you will notice is that if I zoom in just a little bit closer, that the resolution here versus the resolution of the change, the the, the, the generative fill is a lower resolution. So you have to be careful to use relatively small uh, patches of it because it's only. 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels that's really the maximum you can do if you go much larger it just interpolates the pixels makes them uh, you know less pixels for a bigger area so it will become more blurry so you have seen people online doing you know entire side photograph fills um, which it will do but if you zoom in then you'll see that you have a, bl a blurry patch so I tend to keep keep the areas relatively small so I'm just going to say I, I like that fix, so send back some feedback. I think that's always appreciated by Adobe. There's a can down here. Now rather than using generative field to remove the can, I'm just going to go into J, uh, click J on your keyboard, the removal tool. Normally that's the spot healing brush tool, but underneath that there is the remove tool. Um, I'm just going to go back to the background layer and I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger and I'm just going to paint out the can there. So when I let go, it's going to calculate uh, the image based on what, what's there. Now, once you've done it once, things speed up because it's done the calculation once. Um, for example, there's a stone there, so I can take that stone out. Uh, there's some chewing gum there, I can take that out. Now, up in the top left is, is quite useful. You can click sample all layers so that you don't need to always be back on the bottom layer. And you can also um, remove after each stroke is ticked at the moment. If you untick that, you can effectively um, you can effectively add little bits and keep adding to it. So you can, so 
sort of add little bits and pieces and then click the tick mark the check mark when you're done and it will calculate them all for you so we're just going to go around and have a quick look to make sure there's nothing here obvious that needs to be dealt with there's some there's some garbage there some litter there and that that's not a very nice uh, box so i'm just going to go around there on that one there's a cigarette butt there um and then i'm going to click check there we go that's not such a good feel that one it's gone into crazy paving so we're just going to take that back out and we will try again there we go that's better i'm going to take this sign here off this lamp post firstly you're going to take off the strap just going to paint that out there and paint that out there tick tick it's not too bad and then we're going to remove the sign so we're just going to come down here and uh, Get that just as we want it click that again and it will calculate what needs to be done this is a bigger item this time so it's having to recalculate and it will just uh, see what it comes up with on this this change now then it's not so good i'm not too too happy with that that one's not so good there so i'm just going to repaint it again and see if it can do better this time so i'm going to check that the tick mark back on so still not very good so i'm going to go back so i'm going to command z command z or control z on a windows machine back to where we were i'm going to take the the go into the lasso tool but this time i'm going to right click and get the polygonal lasso tool which means i can draw straight lines so i'm going to start here and i'm literally going to just go around the sign here and just make a little square click generative fill click generate and i'm going to ask the generative fill function this time to remove the sign so this obviously will give us a couple of options um, but what it will also do is um, hopefully a better job than before we always have the fallback positions um, we can always go back to the stem tool uh, or the healing brush tool if if none of these work very well for us but there we go that does look very good just look at the other options Option two looks good. Option three looks the best. So I'm going to say I like option three and I'm going to accept that. So that's fine. So there's a couple of little bits more. So I'm going to just go back to the, um, just going to go back to the remove tool and just take out a couple little bit more, more uh, a few bits and pieces. It's always cigarette butts. When you start zooming in and start looking, you will see uh, there is garbage and there is uh, cigarette butts everywhere you go so that looks better okay happy with that um, anything over here needs sorting out nope all of that is okay we will come back and, de and deal with that in a little while now we want to deal with this uh, this sign um, so and these bits of fencing that are here and certainly want to get rid of these cars so it's a generative fill function. So I'm going to right click on the uh, lasso tool and get the lasso tool itself. And I'm just going to follow around the top of these vehicles. And remembering not to go too big with the area that you want to actually um, to change because of that low resolution that the generative fill has. So I'm just going to go up over the top of this here around that car there and then i'm just going to go back to where i started so it's literally a small area generative fill generate and we're going to let the ai function calculate what needs to go in there and then and i have to be honest i like i said earlier i'm always surprised with how good uh, this removal function can be so this has got to effectively take the cars out put the bottom of the buildings back in and sort out the road all, all in, in one go. So let's see what it comes up with. Okay, well, option one it looks like it's added some sort of feature here. So let's go to option two. That's that's pretty good. It's got some grass in there uh, and the area on the building, but still not good enough. So three looks very good. Yeah, but I think, you know what? I need some more options. So if you don't like the three options that you've got, you can click generate again and then it will have another go. It will try to find um, another alternative, uh, three alternatives, in fact, uh, to see if, if that's any better. 
So we'll wait to see what we get here. So option four, which is now number one of six, it's got some sort of railing in there. That's not so good. There you go. That's what we were after. Side of the building. Just see what the last one it came up with. Even in fact, that one's actually very good as well. So we can go with this or we can go with this. I think I'm going to go with this one. So I'm going to give it a little check mark and say, yeah, thank you. That was really good. But this time I'm also going to give some some negatives. Uh, I don't think that one's particularly good. And I didn't think that one was particularly good. So I'm going to give those some negatives. So it's just giving back that feedback. The more information we give them, the better the AI will become. So uh, so we're going to stick with option two. So happy with that. Now we've got to look at this fencing area over here um, and we'll sort out this sign and this this up here. So let's let's do this again. So we've got the uh, lasso tool on here. I'm just going to go in and keep the top of that pole in place and go down here and keep the bottom of that pole in place there. And then when you draw around, it will hopefully, um, it will include that. I'm going to control Z and repeat myself this time. So I'm going to go back to the lasso tool. I need to come in quite tight down the side of that street light there. And I'm going to come across here. As I say, keeping the bottom of that pole in and keeping the top of that pole in. And then we're just going to come back. So we're going to take out that area there. Click generative fill, click generate. And then we're going to wait to see uh, what it comes up with to remove that little bit of fencing that we've got in that shot. Now, I think when you go out shooting, sometimes it can be a little bit disappointing that you, you turn up at a location. Perhaps you've always wanted to go and shoot. You're quite excited. You get there and there's piles of, of bicycles or scooters or there's cars parked in the way. Um, so you've really got to try to look at the angle that you're going to shoot the particular subject that you want to uh, to actually capture and try to minimise the, 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 the things in the shot that you really don't like. But when you try to minimise them, you've got to look at how you can use these tools, the remove tool and certainly this generative um, fill tool to actually remove things um, because if you've got a decent background or it's not too too cluttered then it can be removed quite easily so we've got option one it's come up with something here um, option two is still putting some sort of barriers or something in the way and option three it's still still got this barrier so I, I don't like any of those three I'm going to ask it to generate again and I'm going to ask it to come up with other solutions um, to to what it's actually trying to achieve here which is to remove those fences completely so um, I just noticed here that we, we're zoomed in there's a lady walking with a, a baby and a little carrier on the front which is lovely I'm going to leave her in the shot so so here is the option four option five option six still not good so perhaps option one is the best of those um, so I'm going to tick that to say okay that's the one I want I'm just going to come down here now I also want to remove this this item here. Um, now I can I can do another small generative fill. Just go around that with the uh, with the lasso tool, and we'll do the same thing again. Generative fill and generate, and we'll ask it just to deal with that a little bit. Now we are quite zoomed in here, so these are small details. Um, but you know, if you do print your images large then these little things can stand out. So I think that's pretty good. Option one, option two, option three. I think I'm going to go with option three, I think. Tick that one. Yep, like that one. So happy with that. So we've got this sign to get rid of, and we've also got these um, bits on the signpost over here. Now we can we can try going to uh, just click on the background and try the remove tool. And I'm just going to take a slightly bigger brush using the bracket keys, well, the square bracket keys just to the left of the return key just to make my brush a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to click on that. And it's taken away the center as well. Look, So that's no good. So Command or Control Z to undo. Um, so we can try the lasso tool again and we can try the generative fill. We're just going to go around and just take that out. Generative fill generate. And because, like I said earlier, because they're small areas, you do maintain a very high resolution. Um, so actually it becomes pretty well unnoticeable uh, that you may have removed something. There we go. That's perfect. I don't need to uh, 
I don't need to say any more than that. Thank you very much. Um, so this sign on the wall here, let's have a look at that. So we're going to go around with the uh, with the lasso tool, just running around the sign. I could go in a bit closer. I'm being a bit lazy there. There we go. Generate generative fill generate, and we're going to just remove that big sign on the on the wall there. Now the other pet hate I have when I take photographs is TV aerials, uh, and you will see up in the top right corner here there's a TV aerial so we will whilst we're in here just remove those um, and that should work quite well so there's option one that's pretty good option two different uh, different style of stonework option three option three is definitely the one that works well so yep thank you for that that's really good so I'm going to go back to background I'm going to go to the remove tool and use the space bar, hold down the space bar and just use the mouse and then I'm just going to make my brush a little bit smaller and I'm just going to paint out this TV aerial here so that one's gone up there are there any other lurking? let's have a look nope, I think we're pretty good not sure what this is on the, the street light here um, so I'm going to I also want to remove that as well to to impress with that so I'm just going to draw out the, the banding that's holding it on I'm just going to come down here and then just paint round still using the remove tool and we will uh, there we go that's really really good all right a couple of signs on this street light here I'm just going to remove those lovely job that blue bus sign there is just sort of standing out a little bit. So I'm just going to get rid of that as well. And I think we are ready to go back. So um, as I say, these these features and these functions are truly astounding. And uh, I have to thank Adobe for bringing them to us. And uh, hopefully they will, will be developed still further. And I have also seen a number of people saying, this is the end of photography, right? Because of all this AI that you can self-generate. But, you know, I have to disagree because for me, the hobby, the interest is is the photography and it is the post-processing. And for, for us to be given a tool that allows us to remove cars and to remove trash cans and you know, bicycles that have just been left, that really helps us take our, our, our photography to, uh, to another level. And, and, and develop it towards, you know, what I would call fine art type photography. Um, it's, it, it's really, for me, it's great that we have those tools available to us because we used to have to use the stamp tool and the healing brush and it took some time. And if you look back at some of my older videos, you will see how much time it, it used to take. So thank you, Adobe. So let's, uh, let's send this image. I'm going to keep the sky. I think this is a reasonably good sky. I don't want to change it. I'm going to send this back to uh, Lightroom. So I'll go to File, Close, and uh, and then I'm going to click Save, and um, and I, I do the file close because I don't I don't want it open in 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 uh, Photoshop any longer. So uh, I'm just going to go back here. There we go. So this is the corrected one. So no vehicles in it. So um, I think if I could do it before. There we go, bicycle, uh, all the bits and pieces up here, sign and after, before and after. So, excellent. So, how shall we process this image? Well, because we have lanterns in the shot, I have to do one of my day to nights. <laughs> I really do. I feel that coming on. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to, uh, I'm just going to maybe correct that perspective just a little bit more before we go any further. Just going to go down to transform, put guided in, take the center of this light column here, this street column, take a straight line there, and I'm just going to take one off this edge of this. Uh, there we go. That's leaning a little bit too far to the left, so I'm just going to bring that back by moving the line over ever so slightly. Yeah, I'm happy with that now. That's nice and straight. So. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to do anything with the horizontal, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit return. That's fine. So we're going to go up to the basic functions, and uh, we're going to darken this scene down. So let's just uh, let's just do that. Just darken it down, and then we can relight the scene. 
as though it all up and as you at night has, has, is a wonderful atmosphere to be here so we're just going to darken that down i'm also going to go into um the masks i'm going to select sky and uh we're going to do we're going to do something with the sky as well we're just going i don't want the top of the building to be included in this or the trees so so it has the sky mask has has cut into the building a little bit uh, and onto the trees. So we want to we want to have a look at that. Um, and what we want to do is subtract from this sky mask uh, a brush. And then what we can do is we can just do a click and then hold down the shift key and click again. So we're subtracting. Bear in mind our flow is at 100%. I've got a little bit of feather on uh, just so we can uh, and I can make my brush bigger or smaller just by, uh, I might leave that face of that chimney there because when we, we do something with the sky, it will just, uh, it will just sort of mark that out. So I'm just gonna click, shift, click, and just keep the rest of this building not in the, um, not in the mask. We'll just again here, click, shift, click, just to come down there. And then along this edge here as well, we're just going to, uh, a bit bigger so we don't want that uh, coming in to those areas there so we're subtracting with using the brush I'm just going through there as you can see and then just go across here and down here so that the sky mask isn't isn't cutting into the into the buildings sometimes it can look you know very realistic and very authentic if you uh, if you do have it coming in um, but um, there we go that mask is much better so now we've got that mask I'm going to bring down the exposure still further for the sky um, and I'm going to bring down the highlights a little bit and open up the shadows just a little bit we're on just the sky and I add in a bit more blue there we go Right, so what we can simulate is a bit of a moonlit sky. That, that'll look quite nice. Uh, yep, happy with that. So just gonna come out and mask for a second. Just gonna desaturate the whole image slightly. And the reason for that is, is that at night, the colors generally are lit by street lamps or by the moon. And in doing so, the, the, it's more monochromic in the, in the sense that the mon monochrome color it's not black and white but there's there's a lot a lot, lot less color in the light that's being reflected um, so you tend to have a little bit less saturation good right so now we're going to uh, we're going to light these lanterns so uh, back into masks create new mask radial gradient my favorite tool I'm going to take a radial gradient slightly bigger than the lamp itself placing the center dot where the lamp would be in the lantern Going to bring the exposure up to 100% as such. Just going to zoom in. We're going to go into 100%. Hold down the space bar to move over. And what we're going to do is we're going to subtract a brush. And um, just going to come in on the edge there. Click and then shift click. Just to go around this, 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 this lamp here. There we go. Just coming down there. I'm just going to go along the bottom there because light would come out this bottom bit. Now I'm going to take a small, smaller brush and click, shift click just to paint in these, fr the framing. Because that also would not allow the light to come through. That's pretty good. Make my brush big. Just going to go around and take the rest of that radial gradient away. So we're just left with the lantern itself illuminated. Now we're going to click on that lantern. Before we do, let's put some colour into it. That's important. So I've got about 60 in there and always, whenever you add temp into the yellow, always add a little bit of magenta just, just to balance it off. So I'm going 60 on temp and 50 on magenta. Then we're going to click on this one. Right click, duplicate the mask. It's important you do the mask so you still get all the framing that you did. And then what this time we're going to do is we're going to click on this one and we're going to make it smaller, right? This will be to represent the lamp itself. Now that lamp's a bit bright, so we're just going to back that one off. There we go, just a little bit. So when we zoom out and you have a look at this lantern, 
we turn that off, it looks like there's actually um, you know a, a lamp inside there. It's a little bit big, so I'm just going to go back into those masks, go back to that that mask itself, and just make it a little bit smaller. I'm also going to go back to the previous mask and make that a little bit brighter. Now it's already at 100 you know 100 four on exposure. So what you can do is you can bring up the highlights. Um, and you can also bring up the whites if you want to. That will make it brighter. And I might add a bit more colour in there. Now, the lamp doesn't look right now. So go back to Mask 2 Copy. Yeah. And just reduce the brightness of that lamp so that you've, you've effectively uh, got the contrast that you want. So now we've done that, what we do need to do is create a new mask, a new radial gradient. We need to put the light on the ground. So we take quite a big radial gradient like this, quite a big one. In fact, I'm just going to turn it ever so slightly upwards like that. And we want to light this area. So I want to make sure that that, we'll just see where the bottom is, just make sure the dot's at the bottom there. Now, watch this. When we bring the exposure level up, yeah, we will start to add the light in around that, that light fitting. Looking good. Bring up the colour to match that you had at the top there, not too much, and balance it off with some magenta. Always important to do that. I'm going to take that further across still. I'm going to take it right the way across there. So we're actually lighting quite a big area. Now one of the one of the things that you find with artificial light is, is that it creates an awful lot of contrast uh, and clarity. So always add in a little bit of contrast and add in some clarity. Now watch these stones as I add in some clarity. Watch this, look. See how that works? Really, really good. But now it's a bit bright. So what we do is we go back up to exposure and we back the exposure off. Really important, just back that off so it, you've got a nice feel for the light that you've got in this area here. It's working very, very well. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, what I think we ought to do is light these other lanterns up here uh, and do the same thing for those. So I'll talk you through the first one and then I will speed the video up to go to the next one. So we're just going to go, we're going to zoom in. There we go. I'm going to come in even closer still. I'm going to come in at 200%. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create a new radial gradient, slightly bigger than the lamp itself. There we go. I'm going to bring the exposure up, add in some colour check it with some magenta and then we're going to subtract a brush take a small brush and we do the click shift click click shift click to just work our way around the lantern to take that light away and, it, and what it does effectively it prevents the glare that you often see people when they do day to nights they just stick a uh, a radial gradient on and then you get this sort of glare around them now sometimes lights do glare at night there's no doubt about it but on the whole um, you don't tend to get the background illuminated which is what happens if you just use uh, a radial gradient and, and, and just let it go bigger and just light the building behind so just going to come in closer still so I can just add in that those little frames we're going to 300 just going to take a small brush here so uh, and then we're just going to come down the center of those. There we go, just drawing those in, that works well. So we then click on it, right click, duplicate the mask. Okay, so we've got the bright, the bright one again, and then we'll bring that down and put a small lamp inside it. So let's just have a look at that. Now, one of the things you get is an optical illusion. If that, they're the same brightness, it won't look right because this this is further away so optically it would be darker so what we do need to do is in masks is go to the mask that's that's covering the main part of the lantern and just dim it down slightly there we go you see that so now now we have um, let me come out of masks so now we have it looking more realistic up there we're also going to take a new mask and a radial gradient and we're going to put some light coming from this lantern and it's going to sort of flood down a little bit down into this area here. Maybe, maybe even go a bit further over. There we go. And we'll sort out the detail in a minute. But we're going to bring up the exposure and light that area. See how it's lit that area there. Add in the colour that we need, not too much. 
adding a little bit of magenta to check the color. So I'll bring that back. So I'm sort of lighting that area over there. Might even pull it a bit further over. Now we don't want it on the hedgerow here, and we don't want it on the front of this lamp. So we're going to subtract a brush, and we're going to take a, a brush here. I'm going to bring up the feather quite a bit. Take a small brush and just feather that edge away there, just so that that's not illuminated by that fitting there. And just going to come down through here and make sure that lantern's not illuminated as well. So that's looking that's looking pretty good. Looks very natural. So I'm just gonna speed up the video and uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, just fill in these other lights here, okay? Okay, there we go. That's all the lanterns done. So um, you'll see that I also blacked out the little stone um, post um, to so that the light from the other lantern, which is behind, would create a shadow on there. So it wouldn't be lighting that up. So it's important to pay attention to that. Okay, you so that's good. So um, I'm just gonna come out of the mask here. I'm just going to look at whether we can darken the whole scene just a little bit more and bring up the highlights just a little bit to create this idea that the moon is over here and that light is coming in from that side. Um, I'm also going to open up the shadows a little bit as well just to make it feel like these lights are sort of lighting this area, not too much. Um, I'm going to look at my whites, I'm going to hold down the option, Alt key on Windows, and I'm just going to look at where the whites sit. So actually they're okay because this is, this is illuminated here. And I'm just going to, same thing with the blacks, hold down the option, Alt key, and just back off a little bit just to see where the blacks are. So again, I'm pretty happy with all of that as well. So um, what we do need to do is we need to emphasize the light that is coming uh, from the moon. So I'm still gonna darken the whole thing down just a little bit more, I'll come down to minus 2.75. And uh, we're gonna put some light on the building because the Ulla Panagio at night is, is very well illuminated. And if you zoom in here, you'll see there's a lantern on the front here. Um, and so I think it's important that we we like that. So we're going to go back into masks. We're going to take a radial gradient. We're going to put it over the over this, this lantern here. Take the light to the, the exposure to maximum. We're going to do the same, subtract a brush. We'll make sure that the feather's quite low and that the uh, flow is high. And we're just going to go around, click, shift click, and just go around that lantern itself there. So could be brighter. So how do we make it brighter? Well, we right click and duplicate it and put a second one on top. Uh, that works quite well. I am going to just um, de bring the clarity back just a little bit on that one. And uh, I'm gonna bring the noise reduction up because we, we've pushed it quite hard effectively. We've gone uh, two over. So we do need to put in these framings. So using the brush, but this time I'm gonna back the feather off to the flow off to 50%, and bring the feather up a little bit more. And we're just going to go in and just draw in those those lines like so. You see, just to put that frame in it, so that that lantern is in there now. Now we do need to go around and take away the remainder of the uh, of the the lamp itself. We're going to go around there like that. Now this this lamp is going to light up the whole area. Okay. So we do need to take another radial gradient and we need to go across the front of this. Now when we do this, this is going to get too bright and I'll show you what we do with that. So we're gonna take quite a large radial gradient here that's effectively lighting up on the wall. I'm just gonna put it about there. So it's lining up with the light where the light would hit the wall. We're gonna bring up the exposure to brighten this area up. Okay, so I've brought that up really high. Um, we, we are going to um, open up the shadows just a little bit as well. And uh, we're going to add a little bit of clarity to that shot. And we're going to add a little bit of noise reduction as well because we are pushing it quite hard. Not too much. Okay, that works well. So to, to drop that back down again, what we can do is we can go to uh, the, the previous mask and uh, mask it up. And then we can go to the radial gradient there and we can back off the brightness, right? So actually you can you can choose how bright you want it. 
you can see there. So uh, I'm just going to put those brush strokes in a little bit, a little bit more. Just make sure the feather is there. And the flow's at about 50%. Just going to put them in just a little bit more. That's good. So we've got the light on the wall there. That that's looking pretty good. Um, I want to be sure that we have got all of that removed. So let's just make sure. There we go. There's a little bit still showing. So that's lit the wall up. So let's zoom out to 100%, and let's have a look. Turn the masking off. That looks pretty good. Too bright the lamp. Okay, so go back in, go back to your, your mask there. Just want to make sure that mask is, is fully fully removed. Yes, it is. Um, and then I'm just going to back that off a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to add some contrast to it, and I'm going to add a little bit more clarity to it just to make it sort of stand out a little bit more. Um, that looks okay. Um, it would like the area around here a little bit more. So what we can do is whilst we're in this particular one here, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Not too big, there we go. I can um, get it into that. I can add a brush and then I can bring the flow down, bring the feather right up, and I can just add in some more light with the brush through there. So just, just sort of paint that in there, as you can see, and maybe a little bit over here that's coming off that lantern as well. So you can just sort of paint in those areas to, to bring that light level up, make it work very well. I might want to put some light over here as well. So I'm just going to spin that brush over there just so it is though this lantern is, is casting light on this on this wall over here, as you can see. Um, we're going to put a bit along these these lovely. Um, um, they look like wood, but they're actually um, like cast concrete. They're actually. They're actually pretty good the way they're done. So I'm just going to bring a bit of light in along, along the front of there as well, just to, just to sort of give it a little bit of detail in those areas. There we go. And uh, I'm just going to bring up the, the color a little bit more. That's a bit bright over there, so I can I can always subtract a brush over the top of that if I want to. Uh, quite low flow, and I'll just ease that back ever so gently. There you go. So you can see that's working very, very well. I want to light this sign up here as though there's a floodlight coming from behind these, the, these sort of bushes here. And how we do that is we create a new mask, a new radial gradient. We place the radial gradient literally where we think the light would be behind there. We rotate it so it's lighting up the sign as we want it like so. Yeah. And then we bring up the brightness right, like this. Add in some of that color that we we need to have to balance it off a bit of magenta, so you can see the lights coming from behind. In fact, I might even bring it up a bit further, so the spotlight's actually hitting the uh, the sign itself. Let's, let's let's move it up even further. There we go. So it's sort of just hitting the sign, and then we just need to take it out in this area here. So what we'll do is we will subtract a uh, the object right so we subject the object and what we do is we just draw over these these leaves like so with it using the object and what it will do is it will select those uh, green leaves there we go and uh, effectively turn off the brightness coming coming from there we can also subtract uh, another object just to get this one as well just to to make sure that we don't get too much light on that one as well. Um, so that, that's working yeah, really good. It's a bit bright down here, so I'm just going to subtract a brush. I'm going to make sure the flow is at 100 and, and, the, uh, and the feathers at 100, and we're just going to take the rest of that away down there just to, just to make sure that it's dark behind the, that area there. So that sort of looks like it's been illuminated. So let's drop back and just see how bright that is. It's probably a little bit bright, so we can bring that down a little bit. There we go. Add in a, add in a bit of contrast, and also add in some clarity to that light, which also makes it a little bit brighter. So we can just bring it back again. Yeah. 
so that's working quite well now we do need to just bring some of this this area here a little bit brighter and some of this area along here needs to just a little bit more detail um, but what we should do for that is sort of dodge and burn a little bit as though we're creating this this sort of brightness and darkness so uh, I'm going to take uh, a new brush okay I'm going to make sure the flow is quite low but lots of feather and uh, I'm just going to put some exposure in a little bit of contrast in there and definitely some clarity and we're just going to go and maybe even use um, our auto mask function just to go along the top of these plants here just to brighten those up same through here I'm going to brighten this tree up and the auto mask keeps it just to the tree not to the wall around it or the sky there we go just the top of this tree as well we're just going to brighten that up and then i'll maybe put a brighter bit along the top of this this hedgerow here Happy with that i'm just going to put a little bit on this this sort of rock face around here just to brighten that up a little bit so it gives you a mid a mid ground if you like and i do want to put something on the wall here so just uh, just brighten up that wall just a little bit and um yeah we're gonna boost that a little bit more so let's just bring that brightness up a little bit more a little bit more contrast a little more clarity i think that uh, that works that works very well i think maybe just a little bit more brightness here a little bit there just light sort of lighting up a little bit more a little bit on those trees yeah so it's like the moon is sort of lighting in from that side um, just a branches it does look very nice there yeah i'm i'm sort of happy with that really um let's light that tree up a bit more so i think we'll we need to make that more emphasize the sky so let's go into another mask create a mask select the sky um that's coming in through there and uh, I think what we shall do is we shall intersect that sky with a radial gradient and then we're going to take a big radial gradient in the sky like this and we're just going to brighten that up a bit more just brighten a little plenty of contrast there we go and then some clarity in the sky up there so I think that works that works very well so that emphasizes the sky nicely gives that sort of effect that the moon is coming in so we just need to really round off this image to finish it off um, it's a little bit dark in the center and we need a little bit less light around the outside so i think what we shall do is first of all let's go down to effects and bring in a post crop vignette just to bring that down quite a big one let's go minus 35 and then we're going to open the feather up we're then going to go back up to the main uh, basic settings and we're just going to brighten the whole image up slightly we're going to bring the highlights up a little bit more and the shadows open them up just that little bit more and bring some contrast into play a little bit brighter still and then you've got this sort of street light effect with the sky now the sky is a bit bright up there so let's just go back to that uh, to that mask and let's bring that down a little bit not, not quite so bright and we'll back the uh we'll back the contrast off a little bit and uh, try and find the balance there and what i will do is i will put a linear gradient in just coming in from that side as well just to see if we can if we can make it make it fit where we want to be a little bit darker there i'm just going to intersect that with the uh intersect with the sky but i'm going to invert the sky so it doesn't uh there you go doesn't like the buildings just likes the sky what do you think maybe i'll put the invert back on try it that way around no nope, i'm happy with it that way around yep we need to close it in a little bit more on this side so again a linear gradient just coming in from this side here not too much just a little bit just to bring that in yeah i think we're pretty well there one last thing one big radial gradient in the center just going to 
and bring up the brightness just slightly in the center there boost the contrast not not by very much about four or five and i'm going to add some clarity into there in the center bring it up to 10 and a little tiny bit of texture Just to finish off, back to basics, boost the vibrance a little bit. Yep, I'm going to say that's finished. So, um, hopefully, you enjoyed that. Um, if you did, please like down below. I always appreciate a like and uh, love, love comments and questions. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed, it'd be great for you to join my adventure here on YouTube. And so, until the next time, bye bye for now.